Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Gina and I make videos about houseplants and houseplant related content. And I make videos every week, twice a week. And thanks for joining me here today. So if you can believe it, once again, it's the middle of the month and it's time for another monthly plant update. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what's going on in my collection, what's new, what's been What's been going on so far this month? I just can't believe it's already, again, the middle of the month. I just, these months, they're just going so fast. The middle of July, wow. We are in the thick of summer right now. This is actually the first week of like really hot summer temperatures, mid 90s, upper 90s, and I even saw some 100s predicted. So it is, it is officially, it feels like it's officially summer now. It's just been like spring weather, April, May, June, spring weather. And now here we are, we're in summer finally. So, but I'm not so sure I like it because I don't know, I was kind of enjoying all the rain and the cooler temperatures in the seventies. That's kind of, I used to love hot weather like this. I used to love it, but I don't know, as I've gotten older, I'm kind of not liking it as much, but, but it is nice. It is nice having tons of sun, lots of sun. So I've made a little list of some things that for sure I want to show you guys, some updates. And as we go, I, I might pull some other things, some impromptu things off the shelves to show you. Um, and another thing I want to do is I want to take you guys outside to show you how the butterfly garden is doing, how my Mother's Day planter that I put together with my son and you guys, how that is doing. And I wanna show you that we actually have grass. If you remember, my side yard was just full of, it was just dirt. It was thistle and then we got rid of the thistle and then it was just dirt, but it's grass now. There's a few weeds in there, no thistle a few weeds, but mostly grass and it's just, it's beautiful. And my apple trees are growing and they look awesome. And my peach trees and my hollyhocks. Oh my goodness, my favorite flower, hollyhocks. My hollyhocks are blooming and they look gorgeous. And I think that's, and we'll look at my gardens, my vegetable gardens, my herb gardens. And, um, and then along the fence, along the street, uh, I planted some flowers along there and I'll show you guys those too. So we have a lot to do. So let's get started. Well, we had a little visitor knocking at the door. So I thought I would show you guys. Oh, I know. Here she is. Here's Nora. <laughs> she looks silly. She doesn't, she doesn't really particularly like being picked up. Here she is. My girl. All right. I wanted her to say hello first. Okay, let's get started. All right, so I really have to get a wide shot here to be able to show you guys what I'm trying to show you to give you like a full picture of what we're looking at. And there is a lot of stuff in the way, but hopefully you can see back here that goes all the way up to the ceiling. This is my Syngonium Chia Pence. And I don't know if you remember, but oops, got hooked up on my... Hoya retusa. Um, not too long ago, I told you guys how uh, this plant, it got so tall and like kind of top heavy and it, it kind of propagated itself. It broke into two pieces. So I took those pieces, the part that broke up, it was a pretty big stem, probably about four, four or five leaves on the stem and I propagated those. And so those were growing and they're doing great. But the thing that really stood out to me this month that I wanted to show you an update and we'll have to go in closer to see, but some of these leaves up here are ginormous. There's like two, at least, well, there's one for sure that's just huge and then a second one and it's also ready to be chopped again, unfortunately. I wish I had taller ceilings so I could let it just keep going, but you know, what are you gonna do? So I'm gonna bring you in closer. I just want you to see how big these leaves have gotten. I mean, the size difference between one and then the next one, that's the biggest one, it's just, it's like twice as big and it's so cool. 
So let me show you. All right, so I am standing on a chair to get all the way up here at the ceiling, and you can see my Hoya Retusa is just kind of going a little crazy up here, attaching itself. This here is the biggest leaf. And the one right before it, this was the one right before, you see it's kind of small. And then this ginormous guy popped out. And I just adore this leaf. I love it. And then this next one here, not quite as, still big, not quite as big. But this one is just amazing to me. And now again, they're coming out a little bit smaller and... You know, we're at the top of the ceiling. We can't go any further, so I am going to have to chop it. But here is where it propagated itself the last time. And then this new growth popped out of this node right here. And looks like another growth point right there. So, so I love this plant. I just love this plant and I am just super excited about this leaf. I wish you could really get an idea of how big it is. I know it's not easy. It's not easy at this angle for me to shoot this, but so yeah, that's the Syngonium Chia Pens update. And let me show you, I brought up from the grow tent, I brought up some of her propagations. All right, we're back on solid ground. So I, as I said, I brought up some propagations from her and they are so adorable, you guys. And are you ready for it? Are you ready for the cutest little thing ever? So you saw how big my Syngonium Chia Pens is. Look, aren't they the cutest little things ever? They're just little babies. So adorable. So I don't know if you've ever felt the chia pence before, but it has, it, ha it kind of feels like latex, it kind of has a latex feeling to it. It's very smooth. It's very soft. It's really, it really is one of my very favorite Syngoniums. And guess what? I'm going to be posting this in my shop. I know I haven't updated my shop in a few weeks. Um, I, if you if you know, I update on Fridays. I put new plants in my shop on Fridays, and it's been a few weeks. I've kind of skipped a few weeks. I needed a little break, and but I have plants ready to go again. This is one of them. Chia pens, Syngonium chia pens will be in the shop. So um, if you know, you know you already checked on Friday and you saw this was in there. Um, but if not, you can go check that out when the video is done and see what's available. This will be in there. Um, I'll probably just post one at a time. I think I will. And then maybe the following week I'll do the second one. And then let me just show you quickly um, one other plant that we'll give an update. This is an update on my, on my Pink Trellis Shop update. Um, this this is another Syngonium that will be in the shop, available in the shop. This is the Syngonium Tri-Leaf Wonder, a cutie also. Love those lobes on this one. And this baby is ready to go to its new home. So that should be in the shop. And then there'll be some Hoyas, some new Hoyas that will be posted in there. And I don't know, I've got some other things possibly to put in, some different things. So we'll see. I'm not sure yet exactly what will be in there, but you'll definitely want to check it out. All right, so changing positions again. So now we're here in front of my Vitzjo, Ikea Vitzjo cabinet, and I thought we'd look at a few things that are, that's going on over here. And there are some some new things. There's some new growth on some plants. For instance, this is my Hoya um, Ganung Gading. That's such a fun name to pronounce. It's almost a little tongue twister, sort of. Hoya Ganung Gading. I don't know. I think it's just fun. 
Anyway, so there is some new growth on this baby here, as you can probably see. Some new leaves popping out. And it's, this one has been a pretty good grower for me, I would say. And this one is in, it's kind of a, I think it's a mix of, of pond and um, some, what do you call that stuff? Fluval stratum, I think, because it looks kind of, kind of soily in there, soilish, but it's, I'm pretty positive it's fluval stratum. Fluval stratum and pond and it's really enjoying life and it's growing nicely for me. So there's that. And then let's see. Um, well, this, I thought I'd give you an update on my Hoya Wilbur Graves. If you remember, I was disappointed in the the leaves it's putting out for me. It started out beautiful. And then I did get this one, beautiful leaf. And nothing since. It has not given me, I mean, these leaves, I mean, it's still a beautiful plant. Gorgeous. I love it's how shiny it is. Like, I love the way it looks, but I have not gotten any more kind of solid silver popping out. It's been more of just speckles. Not since this one have I had, I mean, all this new growth is just, it's just speckly. So it's still beautiful. I still love it. I just wish it was, it had more of that more solid silver look to it, but I love it. I love it either way. So, so that's that. And then just, you know, a few of these other ones are, there's lots of growth, growth, tons of new growth. We have new leaves popping out on this Hoya Carnosa Freckles Splash. Beautiful plant. Here's a whole other growth point here with new leaves and doing beautifully, just doing great. Um, a not so fun update. I did find some spider mites on some Dyskidias up here and I did treat those. So I think maybe like the webbing I saw was actually kind of old. Um, cause I didn't, I always like, I'll blow on the webbing and I'll see if, you know, they start moving around and there was no movement. So I think it, it it's just old because I'm treating my plants with Azimax and I think it's already working. I really do, so um, so that shouldn't be an issue. All right, so I think the last thing we're gonna look at on the shelf is, if you can see down here, I have a bunch of my little Hoyas that, um, they, they came to me as cuttings. Each one of these was just a cutting, an unrooted cutting, and I rooted these in sphagnum moss, and then I just recently transferred them to pawn. So these are all in pawn. And I'm not gonna go too much into it because I wanna do a separate video on this to show you like the process, how I do it, and um, talk a little bit more about pawn and whatnot. So I'm not gonna like go too much into this, but I just want you to see that all of these down here, these are all little cuttings that um, I purchased and rooted and are now living in pond. So I think they're so cute. And yeah, so that's it here. All right, so um, my next update is a really exciting update, I think. And I wasn't really wasn't expecting this to be doing so well. So let me just show you without further ado. This is my trifasciata, my Passiflora trifasciata. So this used to be in my living room and it would trail, it trailed across the, the windows, went all the way across and it, it was huge. It got really big um, and it flowered all the time. And um, it was, it, it, it was cool. We'll just say it was cool. Um, but then over the winter, it didn't like that location. It lost 
a bunch of leaves, a bunch of leaves fell off and it was basically, it was just like bare vine with a few leaves here and there. It didn't look, it didn't look nice at all. Um, so I decided finally, I've been wanting to do it and I kept putting it off and finally I did it just a couple months ago. I removed it and I chopped it. So this plant was basically nothing. There was nothing left. I chopped the whole thing down and look, in just a couple months, has it even been a couple months? Maybe it's only been a few weeks, four weeks, a month. I don't know, I'll have to look it up. Um, I can't remember, but it has not been long at all. And look at this, all of this new growth. So now this lives in my bedroom, just on the shelf. And um, it, it, it's trying to grow up. It's, um, it's like leaning against the wall. It's like going up the wall. It's not attaching, of course, but I don't know. I got to figure out what to do with this. I'm not sure what, how I want to grow this. This is a messy plant. It, like I said, it gets flowers. It drops flowers. Um, after they are spent, they just drop it's, and the leaves fall off. And it's just kind of a, it's a messy plant. So I'm like, I'm excited about it, but I'm also not excited about it because this plant is not yet out of my life. It's so pretty, isn't it? I mean, I don't want it out of my life, but I also don't want to deal with the mess that this one gives me. So I don't know. I thought I was going to put it in like a, in a hanging, like a plant hanger, like maybe a macrame plant hanger. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do with this one. I got to figure it out. But for now, and probably for a while, it's just going to be sitting on the shelf in my bedroom, climbing up the wall. So that's Passiflora trifasciata. Can you believe it? Can you believe all this growth that came back? I had um, propagated, like I, when I cut the stems, I did save some leaves and I put them in water and I ended up just tossing those leaves. They were doing fine. Um, they might, some of them might have had some roots, some root growth, but you know, I have all this and I was just like, I needed to, I just needed to, I just needed to toss those. I just needed to remove them and just concentrate on this. So it's a very delicate vine. The leaves are kind of delicate and it's just, it's, it's really pretty. Just messy. It's just a messy one. So that's Passiflora trifasciata. That's the update. Okay, so the next update is right behind me here on my pink trellis. And you may have, I mean, if you're, if you're a very observant person, you might have noticed before I even said anything that it's looking different. So which, what's new? Can you tell what's new? You have any guesses? It's this, this is the Syngonium Frosted Heart. And I just recently brought this plant into this room. It was growing in my Ikea cabinet, doing, as you can see, very well. It's very healthy, very pretty. And um, I decided, you know, I recently had to redo this wall and it was looking a little bit bare to me. And I know this plant does not have to be in like a high humidity situation. Not that my Ikea cabinet gets high humidity. It doesn't because it's not um, weatherproofed at all. Um, so it's probably getting the exact same amount of humidity in this room as it was getting in that cabinet. But I just love it. I brought it here. Let me see if you can see there's the top of it. I just brought it in here. I think it looks so pretty. I love it. It's one of my very favorite Syngoniums. And um, I'll take you in for a closer look, but I just think it, it, it looks stunning there. It looks really nice. And um, yeah, I'll take you in for a closer look. But you know what? No, no, I'll, I'll save that. I'll save that after we take a closer look here because there is some other things here that I want to show you. So, all right, let's, let's take a closer look. 
Isn't she just beautiful? She just looks so good on this trellis. And the leaves on the Frosted Heart are just, they're kind of, they're almost kind of shimmery, sort of. They're just, I think they're just, they're just stunning. I don't know how else to describe them, but. And they almost kind of lie a little bit flat, as you can see. And I think they'll continue doing that, growing as they grow up. I think they'll continue to do that. Almost kind of looks like a shingling plant a little bit. It's not, I don't think it is. No, I know it's not but it just kind of has that look. And it's, I just love it. I think it looks really good on the trellis with my other Syngoniums. I need to do another Syngonium video, maybe like an update on my Syngonium collection. It's been a while. Things have changed, things have grown and I think that would be fun. So, so yeah, so there, there is an update there. Syngonium Frosted Heart. No longer in the Ikea cabinet. Out here on the pink trellis. Okay, so I almost got distracted. And, um, but I said I'll show you after we look at the Frosted Heart. So let me show you what almost distracted me. So here, this is my... Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor. I just, just yesterday, I brought it up from the um, grow tent. It was living in my grow tent. I decided it was time for it to come up here and join, join the fam here. And um, we'll see how it does. It's got a new leaf coming out here. And I'm pretty sure I told you guys I had this. I'm pretty sure you saw it in my grow tent before, but I don't know, maybe this is an unveiling of this plant, but I hope it turns into a real beauty. It's still a baby. It's still pretty small right now. I got this one on Etsy and um, I've had it for probably two months. And yeah, so that is here now, up here now. And then, so this is my Syngonia Mojito. And this one was one of the ones, so I said that my trellis has recently changed quite a bit, and that's because, for one thing, this, this was going all the way, it was to the ceiling. It got to the ceiling. And I told you guys that I was seeing some spider mites in here, so I had to take everything down and I had to spray everything. And when I did that, unfortunately, which I've had this happen before, down here, the stem broke the stem it just broke um so i had to i had to propagate this whole thing the whole vine got propagated so i have a bunch of babies in my grow tent right now and all that was left was this one stem but look we have new growth points coming out which is very exciting so it, this is just really exciting to me so i actually this happened with my Syngonium Albo. This plant here was like this. It did the same thing. I don't think this one, the stem didn't break on this one. Um, I think I just, oh, it used to sit over here and I used to, it was going up on this side of the trellis. And I don't remember why I took it down. Um, I don't remember but I propagated this one. I have a bunch of cuttings in my grow tent. So this was, you know, it was just right here. It was just this one little stem. That's all that was left. And we got all this new growth. So I know my Syngonium Mojito will be doing the same thing. Isn't it pretty? It will eventually get this big, just like the elbow did. And then another one that the same exact thing happened to it. This is my Syngonium Aria. This one was up and growing across and I, I had to cut it down. I did that when I was treating, when I was spraying for spider mites. And there was this one leaf. I did leave this one leaf with it. And now we have this growth point, this growth point, this growth point. 
and there's one way down here. So it's gonna, and I have a bunch of her babies in my grow tent as well. So if you are into Syngoniums, soon, well, I don't know about how soon, but in a few months, I should have quite a few in my shop, in the pink trellis shop. So, so you guys can look forward to that. Oh, and I do have, oh, you can't see it, but maybe if I turn this way. Back here, this is uh, the top cutting of that Syngonia mojito. I pull it out, but it's, it's too difficult to do that. And this is actually the top cutting from um, when I had to propagate my Syngonia uh, tri-leaf wonder. This is the baby I showed you earlier. This is the baby to the top cutting of the mama plant. This is the mama plant. So, so yeah, and I have a bunch of babies also in my grow tent. So lots of exciting Syngonium coming up in my shop. Okay, well, I guess I could probably go on forever and ever with these updates, but um, I think that's gonna be it for in the house. Although actually, no, there's one more update in my dining room I wanna give you guys, and then we're gonna head outside and look at the gardens and the flowers, the flowers, the flowers. Is that a sunflower? I can't tell. I think that's a sunflower. I have sunflowers. They're not blooming yet, but I have sunflowers in my garden. Well, I feed birds, wild birds, and the, the sunflowers are trying to grow everywhere. So um, I love sunflowers. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Oh, if you like this shirt, I found it on Amazon. I can link it in, my, um, in the description. I think it's pretty cute. I thought so. It's kind of kind of that boho vibe I love. So anyways, okay, let's head out to the dining room and then we'll head outside. Okay, so here we are in my dining room and I bet you, can you spot what it is I wanted to show you guys? What, what I'm excited about, what update? It's this. This is my Hoya Crimson Queen blooming. She finally gave me a flower, um, multiple flowers, a peduncle. And it kind of looks like, so here she is here. This is the Hoya Crimson Queen here. And this here is my Hoya pubicalix. So the vine, the, they're, all these Hoyas here are going crazy. So the Hoya Crimson Queen vine has attached itself to the Hoya pubicalix and has wrapped itself around. And it kind of looks like this is the Hoya pubicalix bloom, but it's not. This is the Hoya Crimson Queen bloom. I'll take you in for a closer look so you can see um, some of her Leaves are growing in the pubicalyx also, um, but I'm really excited about it because I have been waiting a very long time for this one to bloom and it's finally blooming. All right, so here we are for a closer look. So pretty. And um, I told you that her leaves were growing in, in the pubicalyx plant because as you can see, so here is Crimson Queen but her vines, they're just like, they're just all entwined together. It's pretty crazy. It's over here too. Pubicalyx is coming over here to the Quin Quinervia, which also is giving me a bunch of new leaves. And so far they haven't attached themselves to the obovada. So hopefully that doesn't happen there, but I know it will. I'm sure it will. So, so yeah, so that's, that's an update. We finally got a bloom. Crimson Queen, Hoya Crimson Queen. All right, I've got my hat and let's go head outside now. All right, so do you guys remember this? This is my Mother's Day planter. I got this planter for Mother's Day and then my son and I put this whole thing together. We put all the flowers in and um, it's just so beautiful. It looks so beautiful. And um, so it was Mother's Day early spring, I guess. Is Mother's Day early spring or the middle of spring and 
we were getting lots of rain, lots of hail, and I know I showed you guys how this was looking after one of the hailstorms we got. It was looking pretty bad. It wasn't looking very good, but it, it has bounced back beautifully and it's just continuing to grow. I love how this is trailing over the side of the pot here and it's just I just love it so I'll I'll take you in for a closer look at this all right so I should have done a little refresher on what the names of all of these flowers are because I am not remembering um, my brain is not working so Possibly I can put the name on the screen of what these are all called, but so I believe this is like a salvia here. Very pretty. I love these little trumpety flowers here. And then this is the, it's like a succulent type of plant. Very cute. And these, just gorgeous. Very pretty, and of course, daisies. I love daisies. They're looking stunning in the pot. And then over here, I also got this rooster pot, kind of for Mother's Day. Um, and then I found this, this is a I think it's a Graptopetalum amethystum or something like that. I found that at Lowe's and I think they look really cute together. All right, so I guess we'll head out to the butterfly garden. This was another pot I made, not with you guys. I told you I was going to be putting this one together. This is going to be a purple cone flower. And before we head to the butterfly garden, I thought I would show you. This is my new bird bath that my husband found on the Nextdoor app for 40 bucks. And this sucker is so heavy. It's like solid cement. And it's got this cute little fountain. This solar powered fountain keeps the water moving. It's just so cute. I love watching the birds in it. Okay, to the butterfly garden. So over here, it's gonna be a little noisy because I've got my, my AC is running, but here's how the butterfly garden is looking. These look so pretty. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll have a butterfly come around. Oh good, the AC shut off. These were really pretty. Um, they're like balls of purple. I need to deadhead this one. Um, that's the phlox. This is a type of phlox. And over here, this is gonna, this is a black-eyed Susan going to be opening. A bunch of them, a bunch of flowers are going to be opening. And let's see, over here, so I planted some seeds for purple coneflower seeds. And I'm not gonna get any this year, but there are some little babies popping up. Um, right here and right there. So that'll be next year. I'll get to enjoy the purple cone flowers. And then also over here, I just threw down some butterfly weed seed over here and over here. There's a bunch. So once again, next year, we'll get to enjoy that. So that's the butterfly garden update. 
All right, so here are the gardens. We have some peppers. There's already a pepper there. And this is a Roma tomato, and there is one in there, in the middle there, lots of flowers. These are my cucumbers, and there are little cucumbers. We should be getting some of those soon. This is all zucchini here, this whole thing. And then over here, we have some strawberries. We added in two more garden beds, this one and this one. And over here, this is peppers, different types of peppers, and the strawberries. And then, oh yeah, see those feathers? We had some, something happened here yesterday, sadly, probably a hawk. Sometimes we get a hawk. There's a red-winged blackbird. They like coming to this tray feeder and eating. But, so this is a sunflower right here. And then that's another tomato. This is some basil and a bunch of cherry tomatoes. And then over here is my herb garden. Lots of different herbs. Aren't these pretty? This is chamomile. It's a little bee. And then these are sunflowers here. This, here, this is cilantro. We've been enjoying this in our burritos. This is mint. And what else? We have some rosemary hiding here and some oregano, some sage. And what else here? Oh, over here we have thyme, I believe. I think that's time. I don't remember. This came up last, I planted it last year and it came up again this year. So it smells, oh my gosh, it smells so good. We should be getting flowers soon. Sunflowers. All right, let me show you the hollyhocks. Okay, before we get to the hollyhocks, I just wanted to show you guys this area here, which we finally finished off. Um, we put the rocks down and we got all of our um, plants in place. And I even have some solar lighting here, little mushrooms, of course, because you guys know how much I, I love mushrooms and mushroom decor. And I'll include um, some video of what it looks like at night. And I think it looks so cute when it's lit up and yeah i think it, it looks really nice so so here are my peach trees remember how small they were or did we even have them last time last pic or last video i don't remember uh i think we did have the peach trees so they're growing up nicely here's these are both peach trees and then over here are the apple trees and i know for sure that these were not in the last video, but here they are now. So this one is a Braeburn apple. And then this one over here is a Golden Delicious. And look how big, they were tiny. They were, I think they were smaller than the peach trees and they've grown up really nicely. They're doing really well. So we're hoping they do well through the winter. And then did you notice this is no longer dirt. We have grass. There are some weeds, but it's mostly, it's mostly grass. It's green. We finally have a yard again here. All right, so let's go look at the hollyhocks. So 
here are my hollyhocks. And I planted these last year. And these are all, these all came up again from last year. There's a little down here, over here, there's a, the butterflies and the moths. They love the hollyhocks. And then also you see I have nasturtium, which I collected the seeds last fall and planted them this year. And these are all, these came back up. And then here, I planted some giant sunflower seeds and those are coming up. They'll be coming up all along this fence line. Look at all those hollyhocks. My very favorite flower, my favorite perennial flower. They're just, and look how tall, they get even taller. They'll be taller than me by the, by the fall. And they grow so well out here in Colorado because it's so dry here that they don't get um, the, I forget what it's called. It's a, it's like a, like, is it like a mold maybe that these are prone to get in human environments. And because it is so dry out here, we don't have to worry about that. And they do so well. All right, let's go look at the flowers I planted on the other side of the fence. Oh, and these here are grapes. My husband wanted to put some grapes on this fence line. So these are our grapes. What kind are they? Do you remember? No. Oh. It says on it. Oh, is there a tag? Well, this one is just built. Well, that's okay. They're grapes. Just, you know, they're grapes. One's a purple and one's a white. Okay. One's purple, one's white. So all along here, I planted all, these are all perennials here. And just, they go all along the fence line. And then look how pretty they look with the hollyhocks. And then in between, there is, we did put some wildflower seed down. So some of those are popping up, like here. This is a wildflower and this. I'm not sure exactly what it will be. But I think it looks nice. It's kind of dry. Let's feel, no, it's still wet. The sprinklers did their job this morning. And then we did run a hose, a soaker hose, all the way down, which I turn on in the afternoon for them. Doesn't it just look so pretty? So that is, that's the outside. That's what's going on outside. That's the update for everything going on outside. My beautiful hollyhocks. These are, can you tell they're my favorite thing? They're my absolute favorite. So, all right, let's go back inside. I almost forgot. I went to go grab my tripod, which is right here on the patio from earlier. And I saw this and I forgot to show you guys this and I'm, I'm so proud of this and I love this so much and I wanted to show you how pretty it is. So this plant stand here, I found in, when we lived in California, I picked it up, it's vintage, it's a metal, it was white and I painted it that kind of a sage green color. And I have had this with me many, many years now and I put some flowers on it. And I just think they look so cute, so pretty. Look at those, They're so sweet. Sweet little purple and yellow flowers. And these, I think they're, 
can't remember what these are called, but I believe these are a moss rose, maybe? They're all the same. And then this one up here. So I wanted to show you that before we go inside. And we're back inside and it feels so good in here. It is so hot out there. It must be in the upper 90s, I'm sure. That's what it was yesterday. And that sun, if you've ever been to Colorado, you know how intense the sun is, like in this area, like in the Denver area, because we're a mile closer to the sun here and you can really, you can really tell. You can really tell, so the sun is burning hot. Anyways, it's nice to be back inside in the cool with the, I have my humidifier going, so it's like cool and it's misty and it's, it's like a rainforest in here. So, well, I really hope you guys enjoyed that video, seeing my updates for the month of July. Again, crazy, it's already the middle of July. Um, if you did enjoy that, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. I make videos twice a week and I'd love for you to be a part of this community. And I hope you guys have a fabulous week as always, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Bye.